standing by. And Nick, uh, since the Second World War, Germany has tried, perhaps more than any other country in the EU, to work diplomatically with Russia. Presumably now that door to diplomacy has shut. So what options do you think Berlin now has? I think the German government is doing a rethink. And look, let's just the historical reasons why Germany thinks it can speak well uh, with the Kremlin is because half of the country, East Germany, was part of the Soviet satellite bloc. Uh, so you have all of that history. And then you have within that story, the Social Democratic Party, whose man is now the chancellor of Germany, throughout the 1960s and 70s, engaging in Ostpolitik, Eastern politics, Eastern policies, policies, if you will, a rapprochement, a détente policy in order to allow exchanges with East Germany uh, and trade with uh, Russia, with the Soviet Union, I should say, itself, with the idea that there would be what the Germans call a Wandel durch Handel, so changing the society through trade, sort of soften the mores through trade, and you have a whole cadre of these Putin understanders, Putin whisperers. All of that has been blown to smithereens with this invasion. This whole notion, I think, that there's a special part of the German foreign policy establishment that really gets Russia and can talk sense to the Kremlin, that is gone. Let's remember we have a former social democratic chancellor sitting on the board of Gazprom, running that uh, gas pipeline Nord Stream 2, part of was running it, uh, that has now been uh, basically turned off. It will never operate until, well, you know, the West decides that Russia has pulled out of Ukraine or whatever the demands are at one point. So, the foreign policy, I think, is really going to change this whole notion that Germany uh, has some sort of special, you know, hotline to the Kremlin that doesn't exist anymore. So uh, as to what they're going to do next, I think, you know, we just heard Annalena Baer boxing. We're talking with our allies. We're speaking with one voice. It's going to be sanctions uh, harder than you can imagine. I can't remember exact language, but the most toughest, the toughest and most consequential sanctions uh, the Kremlin could imagine. One of the big problems, though, for Germany, Nick, as you alluded to is gas, German dependent on Russian dependency rather on Russian gas. Nord Stream 2, as you say, has been put on hold, but Nord Stream 1 is still going and Germany needs that gas, doesn't it? Germany needs gas. You know, I mean, there are gas reserves. Uh, the, uh, uh, sorry for the light going off there. The, uh, head of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, who is German herself, said there are enough reserves in Europe to get European countries uh, through the winter. And then beyond that, we just had the Qatari ambassador saying here in Berlin that they would supply liquid natural gas. There aren't just pipelines. There are those super tankers with super cooled natural gas that can be sent to uh, different ports. Germany is thinking of building one, and now I think they're thinking a lot harder about building one in Hamburg with their various ones all around Europe to get gas into Europe. And of course, Germany is engaged in a long term, looking ahead decades, in an en energy transition away from um, carbon based energy. So this, this sort of fits into that. And the Greens who are in the government are quite happy with this li liquid natural gas idea, saying, you know, you'll be building pipelines that will be able to use hydrogen, one of the alternative fuels. There could be a problem, but, you know, the Germans are willing to bite the bullet. Annalena Baerbock, whom we've just uh, heard speaking, has said before, Russia is going to pay a high price. And if it means Germany has to pay a bit of a price as well, we're perfectly happy with that. Nick Spicer, live in Berlin. Thanks very much indeed for your reporting and your analysis uh, on the programme.